And so is yeah. it true that the French don't like Americans? No, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It's more an arrogant thing saying uh. that we have a, a, a bigger culture and better food and of course we have a better food that's that's for sure but i mean you cannot always compare everything in a country right yeah so so yeah Okay, what's up everyone? We are out here today with Warbles. Hey. He's visiting uh, yeah. the United States and we got to catch him while he's here on tour. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you grew up in France. Yep. Um, what was it like growing up there? Well, it's actually great. I mean, it's very... I think it's very easy to grow up in, in Europe and especially, especially in a country like France. Um, no, I love it. I love it. Uh, and I think... I've been pretty lucky to to have my parents do whatever they had to do for m to give me the best life I could have, you know. Mm. So so they fought and worked very hard to pay me music classes and oh, that wow. kind of thing. So so yeah. So here I am. <laughs> and you started playing piano at the yeah. age of three. How exactly. did were you just drawn to it, or how did that come about? Well, you know, I, I, I was seeing my father playing guitar and piano in the living room and, uh, and I, I really loved it. And I, I was telling them, yeah, I want to do that. Oh. I, originally, I wanted to, to play guitar, but I think yeah. the, 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 the teachers, they told my parents that I was too young to do that. Uh. So they, they put me at piano lessons and I actually loved it. And I, yeah. kept, I kept, yeah, doing that wow. all my life, yeah. So are your parents also in the music field or was it just a hobby, creative field? Not really. I mean, my mother, not, not at all. Uh, but my father, yeah, I mean, just as a hobby, he's self-taught, guitarist and pianist. And uh, yeah, he sings, you know, just for fun. Can you sing? No, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I can't sing with him, you know, we're <laughs> doing this kind of karaoke when we are playing piano and yeah. guitar together. I mean, it's fun and it's something we do together. Like a family thing, you know, and yeah. it's, a, it's, it's oh. really fun, but it's, we, we don't really, we are not really singers. <laughs> oh. So it's like karaoke for fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what part of France did you grow up in? So I grew up in the suburb of Paris and uh, oh. at the age of 18, something like that, I, I left to near Germany. Uh, so in the, the in the east, yeah. No, I mean, it was just because my mother was living there, so uh. I left to my from my father's place to my mother's. Mm. I lived there for three, four years, and actually, I didn't do much there apart from being really locked up in my room, uh. practicing and working and you know learning more and more about music production, music composition. Yeah. And when I got out of, of this room, it was actually to move to the south of France, where I live now, in, in Provence. Oh, I was just there last month. Oh, really? Yeah. In Provence? <laughs> yeah. I was oh, nice. So did Provence. you enjoy it? Uh, wait, how do you say it? Provence. Provence. Yeah. Pro Provence. Provence, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, we did the lavender fields. Yeah, well, uh, that's pretty yeah. much, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, I went from Marseille, did the Lavender Fields, and then okay. stopped by Provence on the way back. It's really pretty. I have a friend who lives there, and he's saying uh -huh. it's a nice area, like the Beverly Hills. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's not really <laughs> touristic. I mean, it can be, but it's not like the first destination. It's, like, it's not like Saint-Tropez, for example, you yeah. know? It's more, it's more, yeah, a quiet place. Mm. And uh, I live in Aix-en-Provence which is a city that is um, pretty small, but not that small. It's like 300,000 oh, wow. uh, inhabitants, it's not, yeah. it's not big. And it looks like an Italian village kind of, you know, oh. so it's very, it's very nice, very beautiful, very calm. Yeah. But also it's, a, it's an art city. And so, so I love being there because there are so many paintings, so many artists, so mm. many festivals of classical music. Yeah, I, I love it there. It's wow. great. Yeah. So when you were in France, you went to a conservatory mm -hmm. growing up. How yep. old were you then and what was that like? 
Well, actually, I I I did both. Uh, <laughs> <There's a dog. laughs> I, I did both. I had um, conservatory, but also private lessons. Oh wow! And, oh, yeah, this is so serious from a young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, I didn't really like conservatory. I'll tell you why. Because I started by private lessons, mm -hmm. and so I, I I played piano, and I could play some stuff, and I could already play things when I arrived at the conservatory and the first years of the conservatory they won't let you touch the, the instrument they oh, just want you to theory? practice yeah to practice the theory and so I didn't really like it yeah. I kept on go, um, kept on doing that for two two three years mm -hmm. then I stopped conservatory and I was focusing on I focused on on private lessons and the thing it happened something that really changed my life actually mm -hmm. it was like this is a story that is very personal, but also, I mean, it, it's very ins inspiring even mm -hmm. today for me because uh, I think it's the simplest thing, but the deepest as well. Like, I'll tell you, it's like, okay, I'm a very competitive person, okay? okay. I, I'm, I, it's like not unhealthy, it's, it's, it's like, for me, it's like an engine, okay. you know? Yeah. It, it drives me to be better going, every day. Yeah. yeah, to be... I'm the same. Yeah, okay. More motivated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and um, so at the age of 12, something like that, my teacher told me, okay, Kevin, this year you're going to be the best uh, uh, student at school. So you, you are the most uh, advanced in terms of, wow. uh, you know, of, of playing and whatever. Yeah. So since I was 12, I thought, Okay, so I don't have anything to learn, you know, mm. that's I'm done, you know, with it. So I was stupid, but I saw that at the at this age. And so I, I quit uh, oh. classes because of that. And when when I left when I left this place, the school, I came back to my grandmother's place. She was you know, uh, bringing me there to the to the classes every day mm -hmm. or every week, and uh, I was I was playing the piano just for fun, and she sat behind me, and she was listening for what five, ten, fifteen minutes. I don't I don't recall it very well, and uh, and after some time, she started to cry and to scream and and to yell at me like you don't have the right to stop you you shouldn't stop that's not oh. that sh that shouldn't happen you don't you that's a waste and she was like yelling you know like wow. with tears in her in her eyes and and you know it was shocking kind of because for me i didn't realize how important it was at this time mm -hmm. and, and i just thought okay she She's obviously overreacting. I mean, yeah. it's gone. It's not a big deal. I just want to play soccer with my friends. It's, that's yeah. it. You know, you don't uh. have to to get angry. Yeah. But but since she's a very calm person, you know, very yeah. very calm, very intelligent, very she she used to be a, a chemist. Oh wow! So, yeah, very very clever, very huh. very very smart, smart person. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, and. Um, so seeing her reacting like that, that was weird, you know, I mm -hmm. thought, okay, something, something must be true in what she says, because yeah. I mean, I don't understand it, but I see that it's important. Yeah. So she made me promise that I would never stop playing piano oh. and it kind of changed my life because wow. from this point, I would never play piano just for me or just for fun or just, but I kept on doing because mm -hmm. I had to and because I couldn't break this promise yeah. also, you know? Wow. So, yeah, it, uh, after that, I mean, every session when I was playing the piano mm -hmm. was more for me, how, how to improve myself, how yeah. to improve it, how to compose new stuff because I didn't have anything more to play. I see. So it changed completely my vision of, of, of the instrument and I remember that it clicked at this moment because when I looked at the, at the instrument at this moment, it wasn't for the same reason. It yeah. wasn't like, okay, I have to go, uh, it's Wednesday, I have to go to my class. No, yeah. no, it's not the same anymore. It's like, okay, what can I invent? What can I compose to make it ah, still interesting? I see. And so... So you became the creator instead of just playing yeah. music. Wow. And so I had to improve yeah. because I didn't want to get bored as well. Yeah. So it changed my vision. I, I was more active saw. playing yeah. it, right? More proactive. Yeah. 
Wow, so your grandmother literally just set the trajectory for you. Exactly, she changed my life. Wow. Yeah. And when did you start composing like EDM or electronic music? Well, pretty much when I was probably 18, you know, when I started mm -hmm. to go out in clubs. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, I thought, okay, it's interesting. I mean, I like it. It's very energetic, powerful. And, yeah. and so I started to work in this club because uh, my parents didn't have much money. So I had mm. to, to work to go, to go out, of course. And so I started to work in a club, but yeah. like nothing crazy. You know, I was just distributing flyers. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Like street marketing. Know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was doing that. And um, and at, and someday, uh, Eric Pritz came to play in our club, ah. and it changed my life once wow. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not really, because you know every single DJ who he was coming to play. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, every single DJ who was coming to play every weekend, they were playing like regular music, mm -hmm. like that you could hear from the Anywhere. top charts, yeah, and yeah. you know. So it was very redundant, wow. kinda, because they weren't really special but when he came when he arrived and he played uh, uh, in our club it was crazy like wow. he brought he brought his world he was playing not only only his own tracks yeah. but he, uh, he also has his his soul you know his universe yeah. i like i like his style yeah. i love his music i love his universe mm -hmm. but also i understand now that electronic music is an open world you yeah. can do whatever you want you can just create your own reality your own style your own you don't have to follow the trends and i understood that listening to him yeah. so from this point i said okay if electronic music is that then i want to try it uh, so i tried and i, I kept on, on going wow you said you were working at the club uh -huh. and then when did you quit and like start doing so around 18 19 something like that i worked for one or two years there and then i left to nancy which is near germany mm -hmm. what i told you yeah and then i completely locked myself oh in in there it's right away La yeah wow uh, the question was not can i do it is like how can i do it i was pers persuaded 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 that that i could do it i mean mm. if so many people were succeeding in that why not me ah. i mean i started when i was three so why not you know i, I could not fail yeah that that wow. wasn't an option so so i did what i had to do to make it work mm -hmm. and and every day i'm trying to still improve because of course you learn every day your whole life yeah so so wow. no no yeah I, I today i'm happy with the level i i have but I'm always trying every day, always trying to figure out a way to make everything better, mm. of course. For example, when you start a track and you start thinking about creating one, how do you implement like the piano aspect and the instrumental aspect? Like how does it, how was your whole process? So my process is like, I like the music to come from my mind, not from my fingers. Oh, interesting. So I try to know enough theory. Mm -hmm to just be a tool um, to be a tool yeah a tool that that could help me to uh, translate oh, oh. whatever i think into uh. what, what into the computer you know into, oh, oh, yeah. so so in america like there's a slang mm -hmm. tool means um like i don't know like you're just a tool in the shed like you're just like a piece of like you're just never i don't know how to explain it okay like it's not yeah never mind <laughs> i didn't get it That's yeah but all right yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just a, a way, I, I meant just a way to, for me to translate it, the best way to translate yeah. it from my mind to the computer. Mm. And um, so how I do is that, you know, when you close your, your eyes and you think about a place or yeah. where you can, everybody can Imagine, do that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, over the years, I, I kind of developed the, the, the same thing with but with music uh -huh. so if i close my eyes or, or even like that i can just imagine new melodies just wow. like that and okay of course i have to work it yeah. but i can imagine it like this and then play it on the piano mm -hmm. and then translate it to, to the computer uh. so i so i'm never looking for notes or melodies yeah. with the mouse or with my fingers on the keyboard no yeah. never it's always in my mind and then i sing it yeah. and then i play it and then i put it on the computer wow so that's how i do it what are some challenges that you faced while 
making music or just getting into this like full time? What made me change to do challenges? What ah. are some challenges? The challenge to do that full time is well, first of all, of course, when you are doing that full time, um, passion is getting a little bit hurt, of course, because mm. you have to wake up every morning doing the same thing for years and years, and of course. It's not always easy to do yeah. the same thing, whatever, if it's music or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same for everything. So, yeah, that's a challenge, first thing. But, I mean, I cannot complain. I knew very hard jobs, so I, I don't complain at all. But still, I mean, you still have to be motivated. That's mm -hmm. not the kind of job that you can do just like that, you know, on one on one foot i don't know if you guys say that on one foot we say that in france it's like like just like that you know no nothing crazy we say we do it on one foot oh no we no you don't say that that's okay cool. Interesting. <laughs> anyway yeah. that's something you have to do with your whole heart right, yeah. right? otherwise it will never be good so that's the first thing and second thing it's hard sometimes to reinvent yourself you know and keep progressing keep evolving and mm. you know and not do the same track over and over again yeah so that's that's the things that are challenging and of course being away from home yeah that's always hard because doing a new suitcase a new luggage every three days yeah. it's kind of tiring you know sometimes you, uh, you're kind of lazy to go of course I'm always super happy to be on stage yeah but you know that moment when you have to pack and to go to the airport once again after you know three days ago you were there and you have to go again oh it's so it's tiring. yeah it's tiring but i mean that's part of part of the job and yeah and you said you were touring right now right is yeah. this been, how long has this tour been going on for this tour yeah current tour oh the i'm, I'm uh, for four days I think because I'm touring in Northern America for three weeks okay. yeah and so I started with Montreal then I played in New York then I flew here and tomorrow I'm playing in LA in two days I'm playing in uh, Dallas wow. and Sunday I will do San Diego and Denver oh my gosh yeah it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be sports so I know you said touring was exhausting, but what are uh, yeah. some of your favorite parts of touring? Favorite part is that <laughs> I love culture, I love uh -huh. art, I love seeing the world and that's... Of course you don't get to visit too much, but mm -hmm. when I look back, it's like I'm touring probably for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it seems that I, I had like 10 lives you know some number no, really sometimes sometimes people remind me things I did or things we shared or yeah. stuff that happened and yeah. sometimes I can't even remember because there are so many stories so, many, so yeah. we, so many things happened you know wow. that yeah I mean that's that's great that's great and of it's course crazy. I mean it's one of the best job in the world I mean you're here to present your music and the yeah. people just just love to listen to you I mean that's a dream, right? What's a favorite culture that you've learned from touring? Uh, I don't have any favorite or thing. country. No, I don't have that. I, I mean, I, I, I think in every places there is something amazing, something that you can uh, remember, that you can enjoy. And uh, lately, I've been really enjoying here, actually, the oh. U.S. Yeah, really, because um, actually. At the end of this tour, it will be my 25th gig in this year in wow. the US. So yeah, yeah, I like it more and more, you know. And to be honest, before coming here in, in the US for mm -hmm. the first time, I was this kind of um, arrogant uh, European saying, yeah, they don't have culture, it's oh. like this, like that. It's a new country and they yeah. don't know and whatever. But honestly, I'm, I, 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 that was completely wrong. And I'm, I'm so happy to realize how wrong I am, how wrong I was actually. Yeah. Because I discovered a country where the people are so optimistic, so energetic, you know, so it's so refreshing. You have no idea. Whenever you, you come here and then fly back to Europe, yeah. you realize how dark the people are, how, how pessimistic. Dark. Yeah, pessimistic, you really? know, are really they? closed and yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. seem so nice like, over there. There, yeah, I mean, it's nice for some reasons, but not that. 
Interesting. Nobody would know. ever talk to you in the street or in an elevator or in a shop or ah. that's actually weird to do that. Not here. Here it's weird to not do it, right? Yeah, I never because when I went to Europe, I was like, wow, like Europeans are so chill, they're everyone's so nice, uh, no, no. like they're not like, they just mind their own business. No. No. no? That's more oh. like that here, yeah. <laughs> Like for example, it, that would be very common for someone to to say here, mm -hmm. oh, I love your outfits, yeah, right? Yeah. Even though you don't know this person, yes, right? You would never do that in Europe, never. That would be so weird. Like, what do you want? What do, <laughs> what, what is wrong? I mean, what are you kidding me? Or you know that it yeah. is. That's no, that's not something you would do. So yeah, so uh, I love it more and more here and. Actually, I love to visit here to see the, how different can the cities can be mm -hmm. and the cultures in the country. So yeah. no, I love it. I love it. Would you ever move here? I could actually. Oh. I could. Uh, that's. I, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah. America has convinced you. <laughs> oh man, I mean that's a, that's really a great country, and I really love the the people and the culture here. Yeah. And you know that's something. I try to do in my life in general. I never want to be right on something. I mm. just, I'm okay to be wrong. Yeah. I just want to learn more, you know. Ah. And so I'm very happy that I was wrong about America. And, mm. and so is yeah. it true that the French don't like Americans? No, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It's more an arrogant thing, saying ah. that we have a, a, a bigger culture and better food and. Of course, we have a better food. That's that's for sure. But I mean, you cannot always compare everything in a country, right? Yeah. So. So yeah. So that's that's. I think that's a trap that you fall into, right? Yeah. You come here and you say, "Oh, the food is not that as good as as back home." Yes, okay. But there are so many things that are nice as well, you know. Mm, I see. That are even better. Yeah. Way better here. So huh. A lot of things. So what's so. up and coming for you? I know you have a label you started. A year ago, yeah, a year, one year, two years. Well, it's it's just a platform to release my music. Yeah. For now, it's not really open to other artists. It's mm. just for me to, to release my music. And uh, and yes, so not is uh, it's something that I will probably develop in, in the future. But for now, it's just to release and promote my yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, and then what's upcoming for you? Like, do you have any? So the next the challenge, out, or? yeah, an album is coming uh, oh. at the end of the year, yeah. And uh, also the the big big thing that I'm working on is the new orchestra tour because that's kind of my thing, you know, to yeah. tour with orchestra. Yeah. And um, so I'm working on a new one here in in LA. I'm working on it and. Uh, and yeah, I'm very excited because we're gonna do like 17, no, 16, uh, 16 venues all across Europe. Yeah. From Paris to London to Budapest to wow. Berlin to wherever. I mean, everywhere, like around 5,000 people in every yeah. venues. And uh, it's very big, it's very challenging, and I'm so scared, you know, because once you book these venues, you have to fill them and you have to, to do the show and you have to. It has to be good, you know. Yeah. So, so it's a big step. It's a big thing, and um, I'm as excited as I'm scared. I think. <laughs> Do you still get a lot of like stage fright or nervousness when you perform? Well, when I'm alone, I couldn't say that because I'm so confident with my tools again, mm -hmm. <laughs> my equipment, <laughs> Your tools. My, yeah, my equipment. <laughs> that no i'm not really scared i'm not uh. really i don't really have that but when i play with my orchestra yes i still have that uh, so how long do you have to i guess like not train but how long do you work with your orchestra before you're able to like produce a whole show well actually i kind of threw myself into that just like that you know <laughs> I, I i did the first show with the orchestra in 2014 or 15 something like that and uh, uh, to be honest I wasn't ready at all oh. because it's super super hard actually it's very technical you have to know how to write for different instruments mm. for strings but also for woodwinds for brasses I mean it's it's very complicated and uh, I didn't know how to do that at all and um, and I kind of learned from the show from the show from oh. working with them from you know and after that I kept on learning, trying to improve, 
speaking with all the musicians and mm -hmm. also improving on, on learning things on internet mm -hmm. and you know trying to improve everything always and uh, yeah then I did this 2019 show with uh, with with my orchestra where we did like a, a small tour or maybe 20 gigs something like that yeah. in in France mainly but also in a, in a, close Europe around around France like Belgium Switzerland mm. that kind of places not too far away yeah and uh, it was actually a success that I couldn't imagine it was great uh, it was huge we did a circle a circle as well oh, circle, you know, circle, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We wow did that. and huge. Uh, yeah I mean huge I don't know uh, I never see what I did as huge I, I, I always see what I what I could improve and what I could do better. Mm. Do you have future. any tips or advice for people trying to get into the industry? Well, <laughs> I think I said it in the in this interview. For me, the key is hard working and but not only hard working, always trying to figure out a better way to work and a better way to do things and mm. to improve every day, whatever you whatever you're doing, whatever your style or whatever. I mean, just try to always um, do better hmm. and wow. you will never you will never stop learning this way yeah so no, for sure yeah huh. I think that's Good. my advice um, do you have anything else you want to talk about before I close out with one last question We spoke about everything. <laughs> I think, yeah, no, I'm I have good. no more words. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I mean, we covered it all. Cool. So, uh, we, I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. What do you want to be remembered for? What do I want to be? Rem Actually, that's a big question for me, and that's also something that motivates me. I would, I would mm -hmm. love to be remembered actually for what I did and for my music, and I would love mm -hmm. to develop my art at such a point that my music could be echoing in in time mm. i would love that but yeah not everyone can do it so i don't know i'll keep on working hard until until i die and we'll see <laughs> i mean i'll never know but i hope <laughs> not gonna retire huh yeah no never, <laughs> never. awesome well thank you for jumping on the interview with us today thank and you. we will see you next time bye bye